And then it says the migration or importation of such people. When we went through habeas corpus. It says no bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. Look it up. It's quite easily ex post, ex post facto. Let me know what that means. Let me know what that means. In other words, you did something five years ago. We're now going to pass a law, and then we're going to hammer you for it on the back end. Bill of Attainder, something else is different. Uh, no capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless in proportion to the census or enumeration herein before directed to be taken. No tax or duty shall be laid on articles exported from any state. In other words, if you take something and it leaves your state to go to another state, you can't tax it. No preference shall be given by any regulation of commerce or revenue to the ports of any one state over those of another, nor shall vessels bound to or form one state be ob obligated to enter, clear, or pay duties in another. In other words, if somebody takes a boat from South Carolina and goes to Florida, Florida can't hammer them with taxes and bound to the bound to the place. They're just not allowed. They're not allowed to pay duties. The the states aren't allowed to regulate and levy and levy duties in such fashion. Nor is Congress. It tells you right there. No money shall be drawn from the treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law and a regular statement and account of the receipts and expenditures of all public money shall be published from time to time. Well, we can dicker and dolly about time to time, once a year, twice a year, but they have to tell us. They can't do anything with the money without clearly telling us. Statements and account of the receipts and expenditures. In other words, it has to be completely black and white. But they tell you, well, you know, we are going to tell you from time to time. Ten years from now. How does that help you make a decision on whether they're committing a crime? That's stupid. No title of nobility shall be granted by the United States of America, and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall, without the consent of Congress, accept of any present emolument office or title of any kind whatsoever or whatever from any king prince or foreign state now here let me tell you this let me break this down for you because this is a really really cool one and the original 13th amendment actually addressed this it's what happened in 1812 in the war of 1812 when the original 13th amendment was signed and everybody's like what yeah you really should look that up the original 13th amendment barred barred <laughs> banned and basically relinquished the status of anyone who was a lawyer. They weren't allowed to be U United States American citizens. They weren't. They weren't allowed to be sovereign beings. They gave it up. It clearly told you right here they're not allowed to accept the title. And when they pass the bar exam and they're accepted, they're accepted into the British Royal Court. They get a title from the Queen of fucking England. And right there it says they're not allowed to hold office if they have it. They're not. Every lawyer should be booted out of Congress today. It says it in black and white. No king, prince, or foreign state. So even if the Queen of England didn't do it, and Parliament. Parliament still exists. They back up the law firm. They back up the law society, which backs up the bar system, which regulates all the laws basically everywhere and we'll get into that and they're not allowed it tells you it tells you no title of nobility shall be granted by the United States and no person holding any of the United States of America and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall without the consent of Congress accept any present immolation office or title of any kind whatever from any king prince or foreign state What? And they did a bill, an amendment, to back that up. Section 10 of Article 1. No state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation 
grant letters of marquee and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts, pass any bill of a tender, ex post facto law, or a law impairing the obligations of Congress, or grant any title of nobility. In other words, it reaffirms that the states are not allowed to do such things. And it tells you right in here that the states cannot pay any debt without gold or silver. It's the only way they can tender a debt. How many states have gold or silver? Think they can pay their debts? Nope. The little things that we do not know. No state shall, without the consent of Congress, lay any impost or duties on imports or exports except that may be absolutely necessary for executing its inspection sorry, executing its inspection laws and the net procedure of all duties and that produce of all duties and imposts laid by any state on imports or exports shall be for the use of the treasury of the United States of America and all such laws shall be subject to the revision and control of the Congress. In other words, Congress has control over those excises and those tax and things but they're only allowed to do it to pay for the inspectors. It says it right there. They're only allowed to do exports. They're only allowed to do duties on imports and exports to pay for the people inspecting them. Man, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to be a congressman. All you have to read tells you what you can and can't do. That's why there's no. That's why there's only an age limitation. At no schooling background. How all you have to do is read. That might be difficult for most people, but if you can read, you should be able to be a congressman and you meet the right age groups. It says, No state shall, without the consent of Congress, lay any duty of tonnage, hmm? keep troops, or ships of war in time of peace, enter into any agreement or compact with another state or with a foreign power, or engage in war unless actually invaded are in such eminent danger as will not admit of delay basically what that means is the states aren't allowed like Florida and Texas can't sign a treaty and go to war with Mexico they just can't it tells, it tells you they're not allowed they're not allowed to run off and get the rest of the country into a war that we really don't want to be in or that we have no right to be in however it says unless actually invaded so in other words, if Texas gets invaded by anybody who's attempting to usurp the constitutional rights, they have the right to fight back and kill them, whether they're Mexicans or Floridians. Doesn't matter. Tells you right here. On to the next video.